E aí, pessoal do Esquina, estamos aqui novamente ao vivo, diretamente do Seminário de Gestão Inovadora de Bairros Históricos, no Mackenzie, que tem a realização do CalBR, do IAB. Eu estou aqui ao meu lado, a Bárbara Lipietz. Hello, Bárbara, thank you for talking to us. Thank you very much. She's daughter of Alain that just talked to us. Yes. And they shared a love about city. Estou é, falando aqui que ela, ela é filha do Alan, que falou com a gente é, um pouquinho tempo atrás. Eles compartilham esse amor pela cidade e ela vai trazer um pouco do ponto de vista do que é importante preservar. Muitas vezes as comunidades acham que é importante preservar, preservar determinados locais e o governo, de outro lado, imagina que o importante são outros locais. Então, como você atender a essas duas pontas de maneira a realmente encontrar o que tem valor para a sociedade como um todo? So, Barbara, you're talking about the discrepancy, about what government yes, wants to, yes. to preserve to and uh, the society. So, what's really interesting is that a lot of community groups, so in the context of this massive regeneration process is going on, which are just showing mainly working class communities, uh, minority ethnic communities, etc. These are the ones that are suffering the most. And their response to that is, actually, it's, these regeneration processes are taking place as if nothing had happened as if there was nothing in our neighborhood, as if the neighborhood is a blank slate. And they just come and say, we're going to do something new, we're going to deliver you something new. And they say, hey, hang on. Actually, there are some things very precious in there, which are what, what they call irreplaceable for us. And they're irreplaceable for a whole bunch of different reasons, because uh, they're irreplaceable because they're going to provide, let's say, particular kind of livelihoods, because they provide a sense of community, a sense of, of belonging, a sense of identity, a sense of refuge, for instance, for certain groups. And the, the issue is that these, what, what, what people value, so in these buildings, in these spaces, but particularly the relationship that are enabled by these buildings, but in, in these buildings, these are not recognized by, by planners generally and also by you know, property developers. And so there's a, 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 a real attempt to try and say, actually, we need to make this, which is quite invisible, more visible. And we need to start mobilizing it. So what I was trying to show a bit today are some of the different tactics that they do. And it's hard. It's very hard. Um, and I can talk to you about it. Yeah, please, please, please. The table. Okay. Why it's so, so hard. So it's, well, it's hard because... Ah, well, it's hard because precisely they don't tend to be valued because What tends to be valued by property developers is exchange value, for uh, And then government, if it's interested in some form of heritage, it's a very, generally quite a traditional conception of heritage, which generally is the heritage, to be blunt, uh, of white middle class people, basically. And, and the value that certain groups of people who have been discriminated but who have made their claim in the city, in certain parts of the city, that tends to be ignored. So it's, it's very hard to, to get that recognized. It's also then very hard generally because we're dealing there with communities that are under threat basically, that are on the, on the brink of being displaced, on the brink of being kicked out. Or very vulnerable. Yeah, very vulnerable. And so it's, it's hard for them to mobilize around that. And that's why... So let, let me just explain what okay, we're talking. Okay, okay. A Barbara estava explicando para a gente é, que muitas vezes os empreendedores veem a cidade como um, um, um plano em branco que eles podem construir à vontade e que a verdade não é essa. Você tem que, de fato, identificar os sítios que podem ser totalmente sítios, os terrenos que podem ser totalmente transformados e os que devem ser preservados. Só que nesse critério do que deve ser preservado, ela está dizendo que acaba predominando uma visão aí de classe média, média alta, branca e que os grupos é, minoritários que também têm sua cultura relacionada com aqueles espaços ficam em segundo plano e muitas vezes têm os seus lugares destruídos ou transformados de uma maneira muito mais drástica do que é, os, quando ligado a essa cultura predominante. And we are talking about social tension, tensions too. Yes. And how does it relate in the space? Well, the tensions are really so. The tensions are around erasure of things that matter for various community groups and that can be housing so social housing in particular it can be but it could be different kinds of, of housing it's about um, loss of workspaces whether it's industrial spaces whether it's it's markets you know that people for instance there's a very there's a couple of famous 
Latin American markets, which are mainly Colombian markets actually, but not only. Totally. Uh, and there's a sense that you know th these are being endangered because the value of these economies is not seen as being relevant, it's not seen as being good enough. You're like talking the, about London especially. Yeah, I'm, th I'm talking about London now, the London case is out. So the tensions are around housing, which is a major crisis in London because mm -hmm. there's a lack of affordable housing. Mm -hmm. Tension around workspaces and tensions around the loss of community spaces, which are these places that are important for communities, and again, particularly for communities that are vulnerable communities or, or communities that are usually discriminated against. So there's a lot of issues around either youth, youth, youth clubs, they are closing left, right, and center. Uh, community spaces of clubs, uh, nightclubs, no nightclubs also. So nightclubs, either generally for music industry or like for specific groups, like LGBT groups. Also, there's a lot of, of, of clubs that have that have clothes or those for like you know uh, uh, sort of like hip, uh, hip uh, guys from the neighborhood, from the hoods. Okay, uh, these also are closing down, you know, because it's it creates. You know, there might be some tensions with people who live around it. So, so a lot of these spaces, which traditionally have been spaces also where communities can come in, can for instance, um, can come in and, and will have various moments of their lives that are meaningful, are enacted in these spaces. So you have a christening, you have parties, you have childcare, you have a wedding, you have uh, eventual funerals. You know? So these places which have brought communities together, which, for which people feel comfortable, they feel it's a refuge for them, are being are being little by little destroyed, either because of Let the me just explain a little yeah, bit okay, so that okay, talk okay, about okay, the reasons. Sure, sure. Ela estava me explicando que a tensão social acontece quando os lugares que são muito identificados com essas para essas pessoas como refúgios, né, parte da identidade delas é transformado e elas se sentem ameaçadas. Ela falou especialmente em Londres de algumas situações, a questão das casas, né, de você não ter oferta de casas é, que podem ser é, populares, né. Do, nível que essas pessoas podem adquirir, isso faz com que essas pessoas também se sintam ameaçadas e a própria destruição cultural, ela mencionou o mercado colombiano, que na verdade é um mercado de é, produtos de, da América Latina, né, para os pra, latinos que vivem em Londres e aí você vai aos poucos vai destru, destruindo esses lugares, ela falou dos lugares que os jovens saem, tanto os nightclubs, as, as baladas, quanto durante o dia, lugares que eles costumam se encontrar e aí você vai tendo toda essa transformação pelo próprio mercado e vai deixando essas pessoas sem referencial. E aí ela ia entrar agora nas razões de por que que acontece. So the reasons, please. Yes, so the, the reason why they're being threatened is yeah. because A, they're not recognized as being of value. Mm -hmm. um, because, because of regeneration policies which are in the London context, driven by property developers and financial investors. Um, But the city can... The city, in principle, could. Uh, it's <laughs> it's not that regulated in the London context, and actually, a lot of the developments, immediate developments, are negotiated one to one by local authorities. So there is a big sort of plan that says we should try and, and focus uh, development there. But ultimately, when the actual project gets developed, gets developed, it's in a negotiation between the local authority and the developers. And in a context uh, or in the UK, where you had the financial crisis in 2008, uh, you have uh, austerity, which means that local governments are getting less and less money from the national government. So they're having to cut more and more social services. Uh, they are really struggling to deliver on many social services. When you and say local, really, it's the city government? Mm, it's a metropolitan. Borough, not metropolitan, but metropolitan never really has the... Metropolitan government really sets the scene. It does the strategic okay. planning and stuff. But the actual implementation gets done by the boroughs, okay. which are like the 32 boroughs in London. And uh, in this context, so the boroughs have less and less money, They also don't necessarily have the capacity to be able to engage in these really complicated, you know, legal, uh, financial contracts that you have to get into. So there's, yeah, there's lots of interesting things going on. And, and basically, they're often in a situation of weakness, to be, to be fair. Um, and the, the, private, the property developers and financial institutions have a real, they really have a much, have the upper hand. So, 
it leaves community groups who try to sort of uh, argue that what they value should be recognized in a very vulnerable position because basically well local authority need the money from from the deal that they're going to have with the developers um, to be able to fill in the coffers the coffers you know the state yeah so it's very complicated so some of them some community groups they then try and engage in legal battles that also is very complicated they take a long time takes a long time it's extremely demanding it's also costly so they have to get into these crowds crowd, uh, crowd funding, funding, yeah. funding yeah. Uh, they also there's a lot of work where they try to sort of develop more evidence of the value of these spaces for people including the economic value maybe not you know to say hey by the way you think that there's nothing happening here actually there's some really there interesting is. that's going on there is economic value happening it's just not quite the sort of sexy thing of the global economy <laughs> or the creative economy it's, it's just, just a, a different economy. kind of a, yeah it's a local economy and actually it sustains a lot of people you know and especially vulnerable people so we need to 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 maintain it and we need to support it you know actually because if we were a bit supported you'd see what we would do so there's a lot of that uh, kind of argument and then the one that I've been working with some community groups now, and I think it's a really interesting dimension, is that they try to develop, they're trying to change, they're trying to develop social impact assessment uh, as a, they're trying to do a campaign to make this a compulsory um, part of planning. From at all scales, strategic. Preserve to be a compulsory part of planning. So, so when you do a planning uh, or a development, okay. even, there's a number of criteria that you have to fulfill. So, the integrated uh, impact assessment. So, the, 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 lo the local authority, or if it's at the level of the London plan, you know, the, the mayor and, and the planning inspector will check has it fulfilled all of these. But what community groups are saying is that actually this integrated impact assessment is too broad. It doesn't really recognize the social value of a development, nor is it able to have a, a nuanced understanding of that social value and how it's going to differ for different groups. And we need to make that much more important in planning. If we really want to say that planning is for its people, which the mayor had just said, you know, I want to have this London for all city, all London, no, city for all London, then. You say that, do it, and then show let, everybody. Show, show that you can do it, and then also in the engagement of that, if you make it compulsory, also you have to do it. What they're talking about is this inclusive social impact assessment, so a participatory one, where you get people to agree on what are the indicators, what matters, and how do we then monitor that through sort of uh, development process. So I think that's a really, I think it's a really incredible. One. Right. Campaign, yeah. uh, but it's at its beginning. It's What's very the name hard. Of the campaign? So it's 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 a two two well, social impact assessment. It doesn't sound very exciting. Because <laughs> it's so it's so, I mean, it does. Because it's, so, it's very technocratic, you know, an impact assessment. But actually, it's about it's about reframing and and sort of using reframing, the social yeah, impact reframing these kind of planning instruments and, and 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 bringing back the politics in it bringing back also the you know what it's supposed to be about. very nice so very a Barbara estava nice. explicando de um, é, falando de um projeto que ela está participando em Londres que é justamente colocar o impacto social dessas é, dos, de, dos desenvolvedores é, imobiliários na, na balança ali e como uma das diretrizes da cidade. Então você garantir que vai trazer um benefício social, seja preservando pequenas economias, que economias locais que aparentemente não movimentam tanto dinheiro, mas que são muito importantes para a sobrevivência dessas comunidades, quanto também preservando essa questão cultural. Então você colocar ali na balança que o impacto social de qualquer ação de preservação de patrimônio, de desenvolvimento imobiliário é importante. Mm. Barbara, thank you very much for thank talking you. to us. Pessoal, <laughs> essa foi a Bárbara Lipietz para o Esquina. A gente volta mais tarde. Valeu, até mais.